Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. How are you? Uh, good. Uh, fine. Fine. Okay, very good. Finishing the 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 class also. Derecho mercantil. Okay, are you are you still in class over there? Yes, we finished this uh, cycle. How do you say cycle? Cycle. Yes, the, cycle. The cycle on, the on September on December the, on December fifteen. Okay, very good, very good. So let's see. But you're about to finish, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Finishing. Oh. Okay, perfect. So right now we are going to wait for the rest of the students and we are going to check, we're going just to review um, a little bit what we studied yesterday, right? About would rather and would prefer to. So just in case that you have any question, did you complete the platform section three? Did you complete it, Eliu? Or do you have any yes. question? Yes, I, I finish, I complete. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we are going to uh, wait right now, just in case that they have any, any question, any doubt. If you have any question or any doubt, let me know. Uh, thank you for being here. Jaime, Rafael, Rebecca, and Rodrigo. If you have any question about section three, section two, section one, let me know, because it's really important for you to finish the section, right? Because uh, in that way, you won't have any problem with your diplomas. So... If you have any any question and doubt, you can ask the questions right now. So for example, a part that is not letting you or, or it's always incorrect or or I don't know if you have completed all of it. So if you complete it, you can continue, right? You can just if you want to advance to section four, you can do it. Yeah. Um Next week, we are going to finish with section four and section five. So uh, we are going to, to do that, okay? So let's see here. So no question right now, right? With section three, everything is covered. Like for example, in this part, acknowledge, right? You just need to write uh, the verbs in the appropriate way. The listening, you have another listening there. The knowledge check, you just need to choose. And this one, right? The reading exercise. So that was really easy. And then you had the, um, the midterm exam, right? Let me see here. So in the midterm exam, you had just uh, four, five, five parts. You had a listening part. You had uh, to complete, right? We complete some of these. Like need to, and needs to be, right? And also choose the correct word. And also writing sentences, right? We completed this part. And also the reading. So if you don't have any question, we are going just to start the review right now. Okay, so uh, yesterday we were studying um, the grammar, right? The grammar part about would rather and would prefer to. They are synonyms. And remember that they both mean the same and both are used with choices. So actually, um, this is just a review of this information. Do you have it in a the platform and this is the information that you have there would rather plus not if it is in negative plus face form of the verb example i rather learn english than german i rather not study at night how to answer in short form i rather or i rather not write i'd prefer to or i prefer not to so not is at the end, right? I'd rather not or I prefer not to. Remember that. I prefer and I'd rather have very similar meanings and are used to express preference. Though they have a similar meaning, but they are both used in different ways. When we 
are talking about specific preference will prefer goes before a noun or an infinitive. For example, I will prefer coffee. I will prefer live music. I will prefer to watch a movie or they will prefer to go to the beach. So uh, this will be just with prefer, right? When we are talking about a specific preference, right? Then when we are talking about a general preference, we'll prefer goes before the general form. I will prefer driving a car to riding a bike. We will prefer washing the dishes than to ironing the clothes. Notice how we use to compare one general choice over another. When we want to compare a specific choice over another, we use will prefer instead of. I will prefer to ski instead of skateboard. Instead of is en lugar de, ¿verdad? You will prefer chocolate instead of fruit. So this is just uh, to compare one general choice over another. Now let's look at would rather. We want to talk uh, about a specific or general preference. Would rather goes before the verb infinitive. So this is for general preferences, right? I rather take English lessons. They rather study in the evening. We'd rather not go to the concert. You'd rather play video games all day. So this will be some some examples with would rather. If you want to compare preferences, you can use the structure would rather than, for example, I rather take English lessons than Spanish lessons. That is to compare. They'd rather study in the evening than study in the morning. We'd rather play video games all day than go to school. I'd rather drive than walk. So this will be just to compare two options, right? Compare preferences. We can use would rather to talk about another person's actions. To do this, we use the past tense after would rather, even if we are talking about a present or future situation. I'd rather you came home for dinner. We'd rather she play piano than the drums. The parents would rather the children watched less television. So this uh, is talking about other person's actions, right? So this will be just a review about would rather and prefer. So these are synonyms, right? And just to compare two options or to provide our preferences or opinion about something. Do you have any question about pref uh, prefer or would rather? Questions? No questions? Okay, perfect. Now, uh, we studied this conversation. We studied it like some, um, well, we practiced it already, right? But it was kind of different. This is the one that you have in the platform, but you already have uh, practiced this one, right? The pronunciation, the meaning, the words, everything. So in this uh, conversation, we were able to study by, right? By watching movies, this um, structure, right? By writing, and uh, let's see, I've been using, let's see another one, by watching movies. So this is the structure that we are going to study today. By plus gerund to describe how to do things. So if we want to show another person or if we want to provide like the steps or any recommendation on how to better in something, right? Or how to be better into something, um, we can use by and gerund. For example, you can you could improve your accent by watching movies. You could improve your accent by watching movies. By what is the meaning of by in Spanish? What is the meaning of by? That is a preposition, right? That is a preposition. Por. Yes, exactly. Por, right? Por. Um, but in this case, is by watching movies. Um, it is not translated uh, completely like por mirar películas or por mirando películas. So, for example, it, it will be here. You could improve your accent. Podres, podrías mejorar tu acento mirando películas. That will be the translation, right? You could improve your accent by watching movies. I learn new words best by writing them down and reviewing them many times. The best way to learn slang is not by watching the news, 
but by watching TV series. So it is the same, right? In this, in the first sentence, we have um, just one sentence, right? By watching, just the preposition by and watching. And in the second one, we have by and writing. And over there, we have uh, reviewing, right? So it is by, is being uh, writing and reviewing is being object of by, right? So we only use one by, but we use two gerunds. And in the third one, we use two buys and two gerunds, right? By watching and by watching, right? So uh, that is um, the thing that we are going to use right now just to describe how to do things, right? And we have some exercises here. It says, how can you improve your English? Complete the sentences with by and the gerund forms of the verbs. Then compare with a partner. So we are going to do it right now. Uh, let's see here. I have it here. And number one, it says, a good way to learn idioms is watch American sitcoms. How can we respond? Yes? What would be the answer for this um, sentence? By Is by watching by watching, very good, by watching, right? Watching is the gerund and by is the preposition. Very good, perfect. Number two, the best way to practice what you have learned is use it in messages or conversation. What is the response here? To you. By using. Yes. Very good, by using, right? By yes. using, preposition by, and the gerund, using. The best way to practice what you have learned is by using it in messages or conversations, right? Here is missing an S, I guess. So number three, students can become better writers, read more. By reading. Very good, by reading, right? By reading, perfect by reading <clears throat> let's see next one you can learn how to use grammar correctly do grammar exercises online by doing by doing perfect by doing exactly you see it's really easy right number five the best way to develop self-confidence in communication is talk with by, native speakers. By talking. By talking, very good, by, and the gerund talking, perfect. Number uh, six, you can improve your accent, listen to songs and singing along. By listening. By listening, very good, by listening. Perfect, and the last one, number seven, right? Number seven says, a good way to memorize new vocabulary is play vocabulary games. Is by playing. By playing. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Thank you very much uh, for participating. So as you can see, it's really easy, right? A good way to learn. Also, we can learn uh, these expressions, right? A good way to learn idioms is by watching American sitcoms. So we can, uh, we have here an expression that we can learn. The best way to practice, right? This is another expression that we can use. The best way to practice what you have learned is by using, right? By using. Uh, students can become better writers by reading. You can learn how to use grammar correctly by doing grammar exercises online. And uh, the best way to develop, right? The best way to develop what is the meaning of develop? What is the meaning in Spanish? Desarrollo. Desarrollado. Exactly, exactly. Desarrollar, right? To develop, desarrollar. The best way to develop self-confidence in communication is by talking with native speakers. You can improve your accent by listening to songs and singing along. 
And a good way to memorize new vocabulary is by playing vocabulary games. So you can uh, use not only by watching these exercises, but also the expression at the beginning, right? For you to express how to do the things correctly. And this is the information that you have in the platform. It says, by plus gerund has three uses to say something that can be done. You can improve your English by doing a lot of reading to describe how, how something was done. I learned a lot of idioms by watching TV to describe how something could be done. One way of becoming fluent is by talking a lot in class. So that will be uh, the option. This is an activity. If we have time, we are going to do it later, okay? And this is um, just more examples about by plus gerund. This is section three, right? Some of you had some problems with it uh, in the platform, but I guess that you already did it, right? So uh, we are going just to review it. It says you can use by plus gerund to describe how to do things. And it says more examples, right? I learn new words best by using them as much as possible. You could get good grades by participating in class and studying at home. And the best way to learn slang is not by watching the news, but by watching TV series. So this is the same, right? The same by using, by participating, by watching, by studying, by, it's the same. And we have a question here. Buenas noches. Okay, very good, Nady. No problem. Uh, if you cannot use your microphone, it's okay. Just, uh, we are going to continue right now. And if you have a question or if you don't understand something, just let me know. What you want to do plus by plus general plus complement. This is another way how to describe things, right? For example, one way to learn new words is by reading books. So these are expressions are actually uh, here in uh, the black letters, right? We are saying what we want to do, right? You can learn how to play the piano, right? I want to learn the piano. How can I do it? You can learn how to play the piano by taking classes, right? One way to learn how to cook is by helping your mother when she cooks. Some people improve their pronunciation by talking with native speakers. The best way to learn a new language is not by being shy, but by talking with others. You could learn how to dance by watching videos on YouTube and practicing with a partner. So as you can see, uh, these are things that if you want to know how to improve or how to do something, we can use by plus gerund, right, also. Now, do you have any question, a question with by plus gerund, any doubt? What the meaning of shine? What is the meaning of? Shine. Is H Y. Shy. Oh, shy is someone that is quiet, right? That is like timid, right? Shy. Like uh, this person doesn't want to talk a lot and it's not very outgoing. So that is shy. So uh, that is the best, uh, the best way to learn a language is not by being shy, but by talking with others. That is the meaning of shy. Another question? Questions? No questions? Okay, perfect. Now we are going to um, pay attention to new vocabulary, right? If we want to know how to do something, we need different skills. So this is what we are going to learn right now, like different skills, different activities that we can use to learn something. For example, artistic appreciation, appreciation, right? Artistic appreciation, what is that? Can somebody read the, the, the meaning here? Artistic appreciation. The knowledge and ability to understand to understand art, its ori origin, techniques, and movements. Very how, good. How do you pronounce origin? Origin. 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 Yes, like that. Origin. So it's the knowledge and ability to understand art, its origin, techniques, and movements. 
That is artistic appreciation, right? Communication skills. Uh, let's see, Elizabeth, what is the meaning of communication skills? The ability you use when giving and receiving different kinds of information. Very good. Communication skills is the abilities you use when giving and receiving different kinds of information. So if you have good communication skills, you know how to talk to others, how to provide indications, right? Communication skills. Let's see another one, another word. Competitiveness, right? Competitiveness. Let's see, Zero, can you read the meaning, please? Okay, competitiveness is a strong desire to be more successful than others. Exactly, strong desire to be more successful than others, right? Very good, competitiveness. Sometimes to be competitive is uh, good, right? Uh, if you push to the limits your knowledge or your effort, right? Sometimes it's good if it is healthy, right? Now we have concern for others. Cesar, what is uh, the meaning of concern for others? The ability to care for others and show empathy. Empathy. Exactly, very good. The ability to care for others and show empathy, right? So that is concern for others. Let's see, cooperation. Zulma, what is cooperation? Okay, the act of working together to achieve a common goal. Very good. The act of working together to achieve a common goal. Cooperation. Creativity. Let's see, Estella, what is creativity? Creativity, the use of imagination or, or original ideas to create something. Very good. The use of imagination or original ideas to create something. Perfect. Money management. Raphael, what is money management? Raphael? Oh, sorry. Okay, um, no problem. Money ma ma management. The ability to know how to handle, organize, save, invest, and spend money. Exactly. The ability to know how to handle, organize, save, invest, and spend money. That is money management. Really important, right? Perseverance. Perseverance. What is perseverance, Rebecca? The ability to keep trying something until that shift it no matter how difficult it is. Exactly. The ability to keep trying something until you achieve it, no matter how difficult it is. Perseverance. Problem problem solving. What is problem solving, Marvin? The problem solving the ability to identify a problem. Determine house and find possible solution to solve the problem. Exactly. The ability to identify a problem, determine its cause, and find possible solutions to solve the problem. What is not working, right? What, what is the issues that we have? What is the, that we can improve, right? Very good. Alejandra, Elizabeth, what is self-confidence? What is that? The act of believing in yourself and in your abilities or skills to do something well. Exactly. The act of believing in yourself and in your abilities or skills to do something well. Perfect. Self-discipline. Diego, what is self-discipline? Diego, not there. Okay, let's see. Soraya, are you there? Soraya, okay, no Soraya. Also, Jaime, are you there? Yes. Okay, self what is self-discipline? The ability to control and motivate yourself, stay on track and do what is right. 
Exactly. The ability to control and motivate yourself, stay on track and do what is right. Courtesy. We have Rodrigo Daniel. What is courtesy, Rodrigo? Courtesy is politeness, respect, and consideration for others. Exactly. Politeness, respect, and consideration for others. Very good. And time management. What is time management, Rodrigo Antonio? No, Rodrigo Antonio. Okay, Sandra Patricia. What is time management? Time management, the ability to use time effectively or produce productively, especially at work. Very good. The ability to use time effectively or productively, especially at work. Perfect. We have also tolerance, which is the ability to accept or not interfere with beliefs, actions, or practices that are different from yours. And that's it. That is the last one, right? So do you have any question about uh, this vocabulary tolerance? time management, courtesy, self-discipline, self-confidence, problem solving, perseverance, money management, creativity, cooperation, concern for others, competitiveness, communication skills, artistic appreciation. Any question? In self-discipline, mm -hmm. uh, I find it's a word it, 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 that I don't know. Stoy Stay on and track. Stay on track. Stay on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay on track is like continue doing something, uh, to that to, that you know that is right, right. Stay on track. Okay. Como continuar por el mismo camino, something like that. Okay. Yes, exactly. Very good. Stay on track. Um. Let's see another question. Any other doubt? No questions? Okay. I want you to include this in your vocabulary, right? I will share with you this presentation and I want you to use it for uh, your vocabulary. You, we are going to do an activity and I want you to use it, right? Let's see what else we have here. Now we have a vocabulary quiz. According to the information that we just studied, we are going to check here some uh, the vocabulary, right? Let's see here. Now we have here uh, like a little quiz that we are going to do. You are going to help me to complete it. For example, number one, it says, I don't like museum museums at all. I'm afraid I don't have any artistic cooperation, tolerance, or appreciation. 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 Okay, let's see. Number two, my physics course is so difficult. I'm thinking about dropping out. I think what you need is more courtesy, perseverance, or cooperation. Perseverance. 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 Okay, let's see. It says space skills include being a good listener and saying clearly what you mean. Artistic communication or creativity? Communication. communication. Thank you. Very good. Let's see. Space is one of Gilbert's best qualities. He is very accepting of different opinions. Competitiveness, creativity, or tolerance? Tolerance. 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 Okay, let's see. The most important quality of for an artist is tolerance, creativity. Creativity. creativity, creativity. Very good. Let's see. Space is believing that you are a good person and that you can do the job. Which one is self-confidence, perseverance, or cooperation? Self-confidence. Self-confidence. Okay. Number seven, by working together and helping one another in the classroom, children learn appreciation, cooperation, or competitiveness? 
cooperation. 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 Let's see. People who help the homeless have a lot of competitiveness, self-confidence, or concern for others. Concern for, concern for others. others. Concern for others. Let's see. Ronnie has a weird accent, but he is, is very good. Grammar, idiom, or learner? What is weird? Learner. Learner. Weird. Weird is like strange, right? Strange accent. Ronnie has a weird accent, but he's very good. So it's Lear learner? Learner. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. You can't joke with Rose Angel or she will punch you in the face. She is practicing geography, social sciences, or martial arts. Martial arts. Martial arts. Martial arts. Very good. 11. I know how to talk backwards very fast. But everybody says that's not very private, native, useful skill. Which one? Private, native, or useful? Useful. Useful, okay, very good. Let's see, number 12. I said I wanted to register for that conference, but I never perseverance sign up volunteer physically. Sign up. Sign up. Very good. 13. The president said in his speech that he was going to have zero tolerance, gravity, sitcom against corruption. Tolerance. Tolerance, tolerance right? Very good. Those people don't have any tolerance sitcom stick they can stand when someone is different which one tolerance sitcom or stick tolerance to tolerance very good you should analyze join attend your options before making a decision which no. one analyze, analyze. Okay, very good. Let's see. Very good. Just nine out of ten. Very good. The only one is learning. This one is grammar, right? Grammar was the right option, but the rest is correct. Very good. Congratulations. You have nine out of ten. Perfect. Let's see. Now we are going to practice our listening and also, let's see, yes, our listening. We are going to have two exercises for listening. And the first one is this one. It says, listen to James and Sophia describe how they developed two skills. How did they learn? Complete the chart. Become an effective public speaker and learn to drive. So we have James and Sophia here. Let's see here. Just let me look for the audio here. Unit eight, never stop learning. Page 50, exercise two, perspectives, a survey, how to do things. You could improve your accent by watching movies. I learn new words best by writing them down and reviewing them many times. Exercise 10. Okay, are you able to listen? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. I will play two times, listen, and if it is possible, try to take notes, okay? Discussion. Learning styles. Part A. Listen to James and Sophia describe how they developed two skills. How did they learn? Complete the chart. 1. James. I have a huge fear of speaking in front of people. Seriously, I'd rather do anything else. And I'm a lawyer, so it's all about how you speak and present your case. I decided to take a public speaking course and the teacher taught me some great tips. By memorizing the first line of my speech, 
by looking out in the audience and focusing on just one person at a time, and, of course, by practicing a ton in that class, I was finally able to improve. Oh, and I always exercise before a presentation to calm my nerves. 1. Sophia I love to speak in public. People think if you love public speaking, then it's easy, but that's not true. I work for a nonprofit organization, so I give lots of speeches to convince people to donate money. I would tell stories and jokes, ask the audience questions, but they wouldn't donate money. I was too spontaneous, and I wasn't reaching them. So I started to organize my ideas. By putting my stories at the beginning of my speech and ending with numbers and facts, I had a bigger impact. I'm still spontaneous, but hard facts and data are hard to forget, so I always end with those. 2. James I remember I was so excited to learn how to drive. I was 15 when my dad gave me my first lesson in a parking lot. He taught me the basics and then wanted me to drive home on a busy street that first day. He said that by learning on the road with other drivers, I would never forget the basics. That was my dad. My mom was another story. She was so nervous that we never left the parking lot. I never practiced with her again. And it took her six months to get in the car with me, even after I got my license. 2. Sophia I'm from New York City, where most people don't even learn to drive until they're older. But not me. I first tried when I was 18 with my mom. I wanted to visit a friend, so we went in my mom's car. I thought by going slowly I'd be fine, but I hadn't thought about parking. And in the city, parking is impossible. After 30 minutes of trying to park and almost hitting two cars, I just wanted to go home. But my mom insisted we keep practicing. So we drove outside the city, where I finally could relax and get comfortable driving. Okay, very good. Uh, did you take notes? Did you have any questions about this? No questions? Okay, do you want to listen to it again? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Again. Okay, perfect. We are going to listen and then I will ask you, right? What did James do to become an effective public speaker? And also Sophia, right? And what they did they do to learn how to drive? So we are going to listen to it again. Exercise 10. Discussion. Learning styles. Part A. Listen to James and Sophia describe how they developed two skills. How did they learn? Complete the chart. 1. James. I have a huge fear of speaking in front of people. Seriously, I'd rather do anything else. And I'm a lawyer, so it's all about how you speak and present your case. I decided to take a public speaking course, and the teacher taught me some great tips. By memorizing the first line of my speech, by looking out in the audience and focusing on just one person at a time, and, of course, by practicing a ton in that class, I was finally able to improve. Oh, and I always exercise before a presentation to calm my nerves. 1. Sophia I love to speak in public. People think if you love public speaking, then it's easy, but that's not true. I work for a nonprofit organization, so I give lots of speeches to convince people to donate money. I would tell stories and jokes, ask the audience questions, but they wouldn't donate money. I was too spontaneous, and I wasn't reaching them, so I started to organize my ideas. By putting my stories at the beginning of my speech and ending with numbers and facts, I had a bigger impact. I'm still spontaneous, but hard facts and data are hard to forget, so I always end with those. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to check right now. Um, what did James do to become a better public speaker? 
What did he what did he do? James James fear to speak in public. Exactly. He was afraid of speaking in public, right? What is his profession? Lawyer. Lawyer, exactly. He was a lawyer. So what did he do? He took a speaking course. Yes, exactly. He took like a public speak course. Very good. And what were some of the recommendations he learned in that course? Focusing in one person in the audience. Very good. Focusing on people, right? Watching people in the audience. Very good. What else? Practicing. Practicing. Yes, very good. Practicing before the presentation. And what else? Another one? Memory the speech. Exactly. Memorize the speech, right? The first line of his speech. Very good. Perfect. And what did Sophia do? What did she do to become a, a, a effective public speaker? Sophia loves the speaking public. Exactly. She likes it, right? She loves to speak in public. And so, what, what does she do? Sophia organized her ideas. Exactly. She organized her ideas. And uh, at the beginning, what what uh, uh, when she was talking in public, what did she do? What what kind of things did she say at the beginning of, of her speech? She loves to speak in public because she's spontaneous. Uh, exactly, she loves to speak in public. And when she speaks in public, what did she do first in the beginning of her speech? What does she do? Great eye stories in her mind. Exactly. She tells stories, right? At the beginning, she tells stories and some anecdotes. So she can uh, call or people can pay attention to her. And at the end, what is the, what, what did she mention at the end? She what, what, what does she mention at the end of her speech? Her speech is so. Mm -hmm. At the end, what does she mention when she's talking? So first she mentions her ideas, her um, anecdotes, right? Her stories. And at the end of her speech, what does she do? She tells numbers, right? And facts. Oh, yes. Yes, numbers and facts. Why? Because it's hard to forget that information. So she leaves it at the end. That's the way she organized her ideas. Now we are going to listen to how did they learn how to drive. Let's listen to it. Two, James. I remember I was so excited to learn how to drive. I was 15 when my dad gave me my first lesson in a parking lot. He taught me the basics and then wanted me to drive home on a busy street that first day. He said that by learning on the road with other drivers, I would never forget the basics. That was my dad. My mom was another story. She was so nervous that we never left the parking lot. I never practiced with her again. And it took her six months to get in the car with me, even after I got my license. 2. Sophia I'm from New York City, where most people don't even learn to drive until they're older. But not me. I first tried when I was 18 with my mom. I wanted to visit a friend, so we went in my mom's car. I thought by going slowly I'd be fine, but I hadn't thought about parking. And in the city, parking is impossible. After 30 minutes of trying to park and almost hitting two cars, I just wanted to go home but my mom insisted we keep practicing. So we drove outside the city where I finally could relax and get comfortable driving. Okay, perfect. So let's see, how did he, or what did he do to learn how to drive? What James uh, did? Tell me, what did James do? He mentioned that Mm -hmm. He was learning on the road with uh, with his dad. Exactly. He was learning when he was 15, right? With his dad. And uh, 
did he practice with his mother also or just with his dad? With his dad. With his dad. dad. And the mother only one time, right? Only one time. Yes. Perfect. And so he learned by doing it, right? To never forget the basics. And Sophia, how did she learn how to how to drive? Well, she, she... Mm -hmm. she began driving slow in a slow way. Exactly, exactly, right? Because where where is she from, Sophia? Where does she live? She lives in New York. New York City. In New York, New York City, right? In New York City, they have very good public transportation. We have a lot of ways to get there, like subway. They have cabs. They have uh, buses, right? So many people, they don't need uh, to drive in an early age, like in other cities. And uh, she was practicing with whom? With her mother or with her father? With her mother. With her, her mother. mother. Very good, exactly. But what was the problem that Sophia had when she was learning to drive? What was the most difficult part? Sophia said that it's difficult from park parking. Exactly, like parking, right? That was her problem because she was not able to park in the city is really difficult and she hit two cars right mm -hmm. and that was her problem right very good perfect perfect so very good uh, you took very good notes that's good so you can do that you can practice in that way if we have more exercises like these ones now we are going to finish with the second activity for listening i want you to listen how they use the structures and also um some of the expressions so you can uh, know how to how to do it later now we are going to watch a video this video is about something that they want to learn right so we are going to answer the following questions what is the main topic in the video where are they what are the main reasons to learn the activity presented in the video? Would you like to learn what the people in the video are learning? So we are going to watch this video just for you to listen a little bit more of English also. Let's watch it. I guess that you have it in the platform, but anyways, we will watch it here and we will try to answer these questions. to ballroom and salsa to swing. Learning to dance is one of today's hottest trends and tango dancing is the hottest of them all. Tango fever has spread all over the world. Hi, I'm Kevin Kane and once a month people come here to the Weeks Bridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts to learn tango. Hi, how's your tango lesson going? Oh, it's super fun. So why did you decide to take a tango class? I was just interested in dancing. And a lot of our friends come here. What's the best way to improve your dancing? Just by going to a tango club. And by practicing hard, too. How did you learn to dance? By coming to class. And why did you decide to take tango lessons? Because I wanted to keep fit and have fun at the same time. Well, I took some lessons, and I come here to practice. So what's a good way to improve your dancing? by practicing with a guy, but you have to find a good partner. Now we're gonna to talk to a tango instructor, Uche. Hi. Hi. Why do you think tango is so popular? I think tango is popular because it's very exotic and it's also very challenging for people. And once people learn something that they find challenging and it's very exotic, I think they feel very rewarded. Step six, back, collect, seven, and then instead of collecting, you actually switch your weight. What do you recommend for people who want to learn tango? I would recommend starting with group classes or private classes. And after you've learned the basics of tango, what's a good way to improve your moves? By going out dancing with the people that you've taken the lessons with, practicing at home, 
listening to the music, just feeling very comfortable with the music, and then going out dancing again. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How long have you been coming here? I've been coming here for about six years. Why? Because I love tango. And what is it about tango that you love so much? I think it's got great rhythm. I think it's got passion. It's a fun type of dance. Do you have any advice for people who want to learn to tango? A lot of people don't think they can dance until they get out here and try it. I think dancing starts by taking the initiative. Take a class. Do you prefer taking lessons in a studio or going out somewhere like this? I prefer going out and dancing. There's a different energy. It's more social. But there's nothing wrong with taking lessons. I recommend it. Why do you think tango is so popular? You can grow into it. You let your body move to the music and you create a dance with someone. And it's relaxing once you learn it. Do you have any advice for people who want to learn tango? It depends on how you learn. Some people learn best by taking classes. I learn best by watching and listening to the music and then getting brave and trying it a little. You know, learn by doing and practicing. Okay, I'm ready to take the plunge. How do I get started? It's not too difficult. Take this arm behind my back. This one up. Now just start walking. That's perfect. <laughs> Try step to the side. Good. And then step back. Now side again. Hey, this is a lot of fun. You should try it. This is Kevin, actually dancing tango from the Weeks Bridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> Okay, very good. Do you want to listen to it again or you're ready to answer the questions? Do you want to listen to it again? Yes. Okay, we will we will listen one more time and then I will ask you some questions about uh the video. Okay, perfect. The last time. Ballet to ballroom and salsa to swing. Learning to dance is one of today's hottest trends and tango dancing is the hottest of them all. Tango fever has spread all over the world. Hi, I'm Kevin Kane and once a month people come here to the Weeks Bridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts to learn tango. Hi, how's your tango lesson going? Oh, it's super fun. So why did you decide to take a tango class? I was just interested in dancing. And a lot of our friends come here. What's the best way to improve your dancing? Just by going to a tango club. And by practicing hard, too. How did you learn to dance? By coming to class. And why did you decide to take tango lessons? Because I wanted to keep fit and have fun at the same time. Well, I took some lessons, and I come here to practice. So what's a good way to improve your dancing? by practicing with a guy, but you have to find a good partner. Now we're gonna to talk to a tango instructor, Uche. Hi. Hi. Why do you think tango is so popular? I think tango is popular because it's very exotic and it's also very challenging for people. And once people learn something that they find challenging and it's very exotic, I think they feel very rewarded. Step six, back, collect, seven, and then instead of collecting, you actually switch your weight. What do you recommend for people who want to learn tango? I would recommend starting with group classes or private classes. And after you've learned the basics of tango, what's a good way to improve your moves? By going out dancing with the people that you've taken the lessons with, practicing at home, listening to the music, just feeling very comfortable with the music and then going out dancing again. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How long have you been coming here? I've been coming here for about six years. Why? Because I love tango. And what is it about tango that you love so much? I think it's got great rhythm. 
I think it's got passion. It's a fun type of dance. Do you have any advice for people who want to learn to tango? A lot of people don't think they can dance until they get out here and try it. I think dancing starts by taking the initiative. Take a class. Do you prefer taking lessons in a studio or going out somewhere like this? I prefer going out and dancing. There's a different energy. It's more social. But there's nothing wrong with taking lessons. I recommend it. Why do you think tango is so popular? You can grow into it. You let your body move to the music and you create a dance with someone. And it's relaxing once you learn it. Do you have any advice for people who want to learn tango? It depends on how you learn. Some people learn best by taking classes. I learn best by watching and listening to the music and then getting brave and trying it a little. You know, learn by doing and practicing. Okay, I'm ready to take the plunge. How do I get started? It's not too difficult. Take this arm behind my back. This one up. Now just start walking. That's perfect. <laughs> Try step to the side. Good. And then step back. Now side again. Hey, this is a lot of fun. You should try it. This is Kevin, actually dancing tango from the Weeks Bridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So now we are going to uh, answer the questions, right? Let's see. What is the main topic in the video? What were they doing in the video? Tango. 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 They were dancing or they were learning. What were they doing exactly? Dancing tango. Ta dancing tango. And they were learning, right? They were learning tango. Where are they? Cambridge Massachusetts. 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 Cam Cambridge, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Very good. Uh, let's see the next one. What are the main reasons to learn the activity presented in the video? Why people want to dance tango? They want to relax. Relax. Uh -huh. What else? Because it's passion. Fun, interesting, exciting, relaxing. Interesting, exciting, relaxing, exactly. It's relaxing. And some people, they like to keep fit, right? Very good, perfect. Uh, would you like to learn what the people in the video are learning? Would you like to learn how to dance tango for yourselves? The listen to music and... Uh-huh. Ciro, would you like to dance tango? Would you and, like and, to and, learn and, how and to watch, and, and watch video. Watch video, exactly, exactly. But would you like to learn how to dance tango? But yes, would you like to people. learn how to dance it or not? Not I your like thing. dancing, but but cumbia and merengue. Cumbia and merengue. Okay, very good. Not, Perfect. Tango, no, right? <laughs> it's no. kind of difficult, right? Very good. Perfect. Teacher, the the instructor mm -hmm. me. A single, single. It's another, uh, another kind of, 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 of music or, or way to to dance. Single. single. Mention single. Uh, at the first of the video, they made the single, single structures. Single. Single but, structures. At the beginning of the video. Mm -hmm. Single. Let's see. Let's see where. At the beginning of the video, right? Yes. The ballet, a ballroom, and salsa to swing. Learning to dance. Ah, swing. Swing, swing, yes. Swing, yeah, that is another rhythm, right? Salsa, swing, that is another rhythm, exactly. Not single, swing. Also, mm -hmm. he mentioned a, a, an expression. He said, I'm ready to take the plunge. What is the meaning of that? When I, If I tell you, I'm ready to take the plunge. What is the meaning of that? When he was trying to learn tango, right? When he was about to learn tango. It's, it's, it seems that he's here. 
Let's listen to the expression. Plunge. What does plunge mean? Plunge is como like to get into uh, a pool, right? Full of water, like so submerged, right? Okay, I'm ready to take the plunge. How so he says, I'm ready to take the plunge, right? Like I'm ready to do it, right? Now mm -hmm. I made my decision. I'm ready to do it. Estoy listo para dar el paso para hacerlo, right? That is an expression. I'm mm -hmm. ready to take the plunge. Very good. Perfect. Now, uh, sorry, I did something here. I didn't know what I did. But now what we're going to do is homework, right? Homework. Um, this is the activity. Everybody is a professional in something, right? For example, Elio is a lawyer. Elizabeth can ride a, a motorcycle, ride a bike. And so you have to be careful with it. Uh, probably Suma, uh, I don't know, knows how to cook or probably she uh, is a professional in something. So on Monday, we are going to have presentations, right? Because we have studied grammar, we have listening, so we have we are prepared. So I want you to provide information about your profession, or if you don't want to talk about your profession, you can talk about something that you like to do, like for example, taking pictures, drawing, singing, playing an instrument, and learning English, right? That that can be something that you can share with us. So share something, give some guidance, like explain how a person can become better if they want to get a similar job or if they want to, for example, if if Elio is a lawyer, how can I be a lawyer, right? So Elio can tell me, ah, oh, you have to, you can become a better lawyer by reading, right? By reading a lot, by taking courses, right? By taking classes, right? Or how can you drive, right? For example, how can I learn how to drive a car, right? If I don't know, ah, oh, you need to practice. You need to, you can go practice. You can, by taking classes, taking classes in the school by driving with somebody else, right? Uh, so you need to explain that on Monday. So you can uh, also provide extra information like pros and cones, uh, if uh, good information, but focus on the positive side of your work experience, like the good side of being a lawyer, the good side of, of learning how to drive, like the positive side, right? But try to provide it with the information that we have studied using the vocabulary that we studied today, uh, self-confidence, problem solving, if it is possible to use it, right? Try to use at least one or two of these words and try to use by plus gerund, right? If you want to use more structures, that's okay. Uh, you don't have to speak like 10 minutes. You're not going to speak, speak 10 minutes. You can speak like two, three, four minutes, right? That's it. Two, three minutes. That's okay. But you can uh, say, uh, I would like to, uh, my presentation is about how can you become a better uh, cook, right? How to cook, right? How to cook better. Uh, so you can improve by um, watching recipes, right? Watching videos, recipes by trying how to cook. You have to be self-confident, blah, blah, blah. So you, you can create your own presentation. Try to write it by yourself with your own words, con sus propias palabras, escríbanlo, okay? Don't try to read any other, other other thing because it's your recommendation. It's personal. Do you have any question, any doubt? Preguntas? Okay, no, okay. I'm going to take a screenshot and I'm going to share the homework in the group. If you don't have any other question, let me know. And please, if you have any problem with the platform, you can tell me during the classes, okay? So you can um, um, start working on it on section four and section five if you want to. Okay, have a nice weekend and I will see you on Monday, okay? See you Monday. See you Monday. See you have Monday. a nice night. Oh, sure.